Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at understanding parameters and outputs in CloudFormation. So let's get to it. So what I have in front of me right now is the CloudFormation template that we did in the previous video. And I'm going to amend this a little bit to include a parameter. And the parameter I'm going to include is environment name. And the reason for it is because I really want to be able to have a bucket name for each environment that I create an Angular DevOps application for. So here at the moment, I've got hard-coded Angular DevOps production. I want to be able to go Angular DevOps and then the name of the environment. So there's a couple of things I need to do here, but first, let's create a parameter. So in CloudFormation, we have to type parameters at the main level, so at the very far left of the document, and then we need to create a, or name a parameter. So I'm going to call mine environ, environment name, and then this environment name is an object that has a set of properties that we're going to set on it. The first one we have to set is the type. So for each parameter, you can specify a different type. Now there's a whole list of types that you can specify for a parameter. I'm not gonna go through them all, just simply because it's too long for the one video. But the type I'm gonna give here is a string because I just wanna be able to type a piece of text that will allow me to substitute this production word with whatever specified here. So type is going to be string. Description, so you can give it a description. I'm gonna say, the name of the environment Ron meant this S3 bucket will host the website for. That's what I'm gonna put for that. So this is the basic description about the parameter. So anyone that's using this template will know why they need to use this environmental name parameter. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to restrict the number of characters in here to a certain length. So the min length I'm going to give is three. And there's also a max length I can give, and that's going to be 63. Uh, sorry, not 63, 48. So basically with S3 bucket names, you can only have a maximum of 63 characters and a minimum of three characters, okay? So even though I technically have already got more than three characters here, I kind of want the environmental name to at least be three letters, such as dev, staging, production, whatever. Okay, so that leaves us with 48 left when you take this amount of text here, and I think that's 15 characters or something like that, away from 63, you get 48. So that's kind of where the max length comes into play there. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna put a regex against this parameter. And the reason for that is because S3 bucket names are only allowed to have lowercase letters. And it's very likely that people will create you know, or type uppercase letters as their environment. So I'm gonna restrict that. And so I'm gonna put in here a simple regex for basically A to Z, and we'll put it as zero many times. And that will allow me to make sure I enter in only lowercase letters into the environment variable. And the other thing I'll do is I'll add a description for any constraints that we add. So there's a property called constraint description. And I'm gonna put here environment name must be lowercase only and be between three and 48 characters. Cool, makes sense. So I'm gonna save that, and now I'm gonna quickly run this against the CloudFormation. So how's that look? So I'm back in CloudFormation, and I'm looking at the stack that we created in the previous video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to update this stack because now we have a new parameter. 
If I now come in and go upload, I'm going to upload my new template. So I'm going to replace the current template with a new one. I'm going to click next. And now what you're going to see is this parameter section. Now we can't change the stack name because we're updating the stack. We're not creating a new one. But if you're creating a new one, this would be a empty text box. But you'll see it's got this whole parameters area. We've got the name of the parameter that I put in my template and we've got the description. Now, the interesting thing is I can put in invalid data into this field. And even though we have validation, if I click next, it's going to, to accept it. But if I click clicking next and then I click update, you now get an error at the top here that shows you that constraint message that I created. I think this should have been done sooner, obviously, like it should be validating the template when you're on the parameters screen. Unfortunately, that's not what the web interface does at the moment, which is a bit disappointing. I'm gonna go back now, and I'm gonna make sure that we do put in a valid thing. So I'm gonna put production here, and then I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna click next. Now, because, because of the fact that I haven't really changed any of the resources inside of the stack, it's giving us a bit of a warning here that we can't create the stack because nothing actually really changed. And that's because we're not actually using the parameter in our template. We're just declaring one at this point. So if I click update, it's not actually going to work. All right. So what we need to do now is we need to use that parameter in our template so that we'll update our resource. So let's see how we do that. So back at the template, and what we wanna do is we wanna update this bit of text here with whatever's entered as the environment name. So to do this, the first thing we kinda of need to do is we need to substitute the string. So if you know about string formatting or substitution of strings in any kind of programming language, that's essentially what we're doing here. And to do that in CloudFormation, we use the sub uh, special function. There's a special function called sub. And you reference that in YAML by going exclamation mark sub. And then after that, what you do is you take out the piece that you want, you use a dollar sign and then curly braces. And then inside of the curly braces, you put the name of the parameter. So in my case, it's environment name. Okay, so that will now set the bucket name to angular-devops-whatever whatever is entered as the environment name. So now that we've done that, let's go back and run the CloudFormation template once again. So I'm back in the CloudFormation stack detail page for our previous stack that we used. And once again, I'm going to click Update Stack. And then I'm going to choose my file and choose the same file I used as before, just for the updates. Click Next. And once again, I'm going to type in the environment name. So I'm just going to type Production, like I've done before. I'm going to leave all this. No, this is necessary. And then we're going to see you know, the environmental name is mentioned here, which I didn't mention last time. Now, if I click update, it's now going to run, even though it says update complete here. If I click inside the stack, it says update in progress. And what you'll also see on this screen is if you come down to parameters and expand that, you'll see environment name and the value of production. Now, there's also a concept of resolving values for parameters. I'm not gonna be showing that in this video because we don't necessarily need it for what we're doing at the moment, but you can look that up for yourself if you want. So if I refresh this now, we can see that the stack still works. It updated S3 as is. Now, because I gave the environment the same name, it still worked. However, if I now come and say, I want to create another stack. So we go create stack, choose file, 
grab that file, click next. And this time, instead of using production, I want to use development. So I can go Angular DevOps uh, development development stack. All right, so this creates a new stack using that template. Click next for everything and go create. We're gonna get a new stack and it's gonna have a creation in progress. It's parameters using the environment name of development. And I'll just wait a few moments to make sure this gets created. Still being created. Refresh one more time. Still being created. It says create complete here for the bucket, but the status of the stack is still create in progress. And now we get create complete. So finally I'll come over to services and I go to S3. There's going to be a new bucket here called Angular DevOps development. So we've now been able to successively, successfully create a new bucket with a prefix of Angular DevOps and then the environment name. Now that's pretty much parameters at a very basic level. But the other thing I wanna talk about in this video is outputs. So how does that look? I'll show you right now. So now I'm back in my template. Before I actually create any outputs, probably should say what they are. So from what I know, an output for a CloudFormation template is basically a piece of information that you want to know after a CloudFormation te template has been executed. So in the purpose of what I'm going to do here, when I create the S3 bucket, I want to know what the website URL is. So that's what I'm going to be using an output variable here for, or just an output, I should say. So how we do this is we have an outputs uh, value that's at the root, just like the parameters one. And for each output, we just give it a name. So I'm going to go website URL. So this will be what is returned as one of the output variables. That'll be the actual name of the output. And it has basically a value. So if I come here and I go value, I'm gonna return something here, all right? So it could be www.google.com, whatever. And I'm gonna also put a description for this and go URL of the Angular website to browse, all right? That's what I'm gonna put here. Now the value is dependent on the name of the bucket, obviously, because the name of the bucket is going to determine the full URL of the website, all right? Now we could put in here, angular devops dash, you know, dollar environment name dot S3 dot, you know, all that other stuff. I can't remember what it is, amazon.com. But if they ever change this part at the end here, this is going to break, obviously. So there's another way of accessing the website URL for the created bucket. And that's by using something called the get attribute function and referencing the bucket itself, the bucket resource. So what do I mean by referencing the bucket resource? Well, we want to get the properties of this resource right here once it's been created. So to do that, what we can do is we can refer to it by using the exclamation mark ref function. And this means refer to the name of the bucket. So I'm gonna put here ref angular app bucket. So that's normally what you do to refer to a bucket. However, I want a property of this bucket. I don't want just a reference to the bucket. I want a property of the bucket. So we use this one called get attribute like that. And then inside of square brackets, we put the name of the resource. 
So in this case, it happens to be Angular app bucket. And then we comma separate it. And then the name of the property that we want from the bucket. Now, I've looked up the documentation and to get the website URL for a bucket, you need to type website and then URL in capital letters. Okay, so this will now get us the website URL of the created bucket or updated bucket, and it will return it as an output to this CloudFormation template. Now, outputs can be used in your scripts. They can be set up. Um, you can, when you trigger or create CloudWatch events and things like that, you can grab outputs out of a CloudFormation template at that point. There's a number of different scenarios where you can use outputs, but generally you'll use them in your scripts. So you'll create, you know, or you'll run a CloudFormation template uh, through a Python application, say, a Python script, and then you'll get the output, and maybe you might use that to send an email to someone saying, here's the website, right, with a URL. So I'm going to now save this and I'm going to go back to CloudFormation now and show you how this works. So I'm back in CloudFormation and I'm going to click on Angular DevOps production stack again and I'm going to update it. So I'm coming in and go choose file and I'm going to run that and go open and then click next. And then I'm gonna leave everything as is, so production can stay the same there. I'm gonna skip this screen. And nothing's changed, but I'm gonna click update anyway. So the stack update is in progress. So what you're gonna see now, even though the update just completed, if I come down to, oh, oh sorry, up to outputs and open this, now you're going to see the actual URL of the website that I have created with this bucket. So if I click on this now, even though we have our contents already in there, you'll see the website opens. You know, so that's pretty cool. So now we can get access to the URL of the website during creation and even update of a stack. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show in this video. In the next video, we're going to move away from S3 and CloudFormation, and we're going to now focus on code build. So I'll see you in the next video.